In this first practical, we're going to open up the PC with a view to taking a preliminary look inside to identify some of the components. First, we ensure that there are no power cables connected to the PC. There is a mains input and also an output from monitor. Next, we ensure that the mouse and keyboard are disconnected. As you can see, the keyboard uses a 5-pin DIN socket, whereas the mouse uses one of the newer 6-pin mini DIN sockets. We are now going to open up the computer by removing its cover. To do this, we're going to use our toolkit and our anti-static mat. To open this PC, we're going to need to remove the three screws which attach the cover to the chassis. Whenever you remove any screws, make sure that you keep them in a safe place so that you can find them easily afterwards. The PC that we're working on here is a fairly old model. Whatever kind of PC you're opening, you should, if at all possible, consult the manual before attempting to open it. Reading the manual can save you time and also help to avoid accidental damage. This is of particular importance when you need to use a bit of force to prise the cover away from the chassis, as we are having to do here with the aid of a screwdriver. As soon as we remove the cover of the PC, we should take electrostatic discharge precautions before touching any of the internal components. We place the PC on the ESD mat and then make sure that the ESD cable is attached to the clip on the mat itself. We then take the crocodile clip and attach it to the metal chassis of the PC. Finally, we put on the conducting wrist strap. We are now ready to take a first look inside the PC. We can now identify some of the components. Even though we can't see the power supply, we can tell that it's probably in this upper housing because of the cables leading to it. Next, we can identify the hard drive and just above it, the floppy drive. Also hidden in the upper housing is a CD-ROM drive. We can just see its ID cable next to the power cables. Somewhere under these cables and cards there is the motherboard, which will be revealed as we remove them one by one. We're now going to remove each of the expansion cards in turn, revealing the expansion slots underneath on the motherboard. First we remove the screws, securing each of the three cards to the chassis. As usual, we should take care to keep the screws in a safe place so that we can find them easily later. We shall see that each of these cards is a PCI card, though there are, in fact, ISA slots on this motherboard as well. The first card out is a network adapter. In fact, it's a 10-stroke 100 base T Ethernet card. The next card is a graphics adapter. Not an AGP card, it's an ordinary PCI card. Notice the 15-hole DB connector at the back. The last card to be removed is an external SCSI adapter used for attaching external SCSI devices, such as disk and tape storage. When removing these cards, it's important to remember to lay them on the anti-static mat to avoid the danger of electrostatic discharge. Next, we're going to remove the mouse and serial interface. This unit is not a network card, in fact. These interfaces are attached directly to the motherboard by cable. Next, we're going to remove some of the IDE and power cables. We start by removing the IDE cable connecting the motherboard to the hard disk. First we remove the cable from its connector on the motherboard, then we disconnect the cable from the hard disk itself. 
Finally, make a note of the 40 pin connector which is lugged so that it can only be inserted one way. Next, we also disconnect the Molex power connector from the hard disk. Now we're going to disconnect the floppy drive. First, we disconnect the mini Molex power connector. Next, we disconnect the data cable connecting the floppy drive to the motherboard. Finally, notice the twist in the floppy drive data cable. The last device which we're going to disconnect is the CD-ROM. We do this by disconnecting the second IDE cable from the motherboard. Finally, we tidy some of the cables away to the right so that we can get a better look at the motherboard underneath. Now we're in a position to take our first look at the motherboard and identify some of the components on it. First we can see the CPU underneath its fan, next to it the BIOS chip, and then the CMOS battery. Next we can see two banks of memory modules, and the power supply connection to the motherboard. Moving back down we can see the expansion slots. In this first practical, we've taken a brief look at some of the principal components inside a PC. In subsequent practicals, we will be examining some of these components in a little more detail.